Okay, so you just unboxed your brand new reflex bag. Maybe you saw some highlights of Ryan Garcia's insanely fast hand speed and you were super excited to set that thing up and get going. And then you were hit with a brutal reality that hitting a moving target is a lot harder than it looks. But don't stress it, I've got you covered. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through three simple steps to how you should approach training with a reflex bag. So let's go. Step number one is to adopt the right mindset. And yes, you heard me correctly. Steps to hitting a reflex bag, the first step happens before you're actually hitting the bag. And the reason that that's important is because this tool was designed for a very specific purpose and having that information and having that knowledge is going to affect how we approach training. It's going to affect how we think about hitting the bag. So it's really important to have that before going into hitting the bag. The reflex bag was built to develop hand speed, timing, and rhythm. I know that for beginners, people who are new to boxing or new to boxing for fitness, the inclination is to put your gloves on and just start wailing away. I can tell you right now that that would be the worst possible approach when you're using a reflex bag. Think about it like this. If you were gonna take guitar lessons, you wouldn't pick up a guitar and just start slamming away. No, you learn one note at a time. I think about training with this bag the exact same way. Okay, so now that we've internalized the purpose of this bag, what it's meant to do, we can now think about how we're actually going to start hitting it. Step number two is to start slow and to start with one punch at a time, which might not seem natural if you want to just start ripping it and get right into it, but it's going to help your development ultimately be the right way to approach the bag. You can see if you go in all crazy and you start missing and that bag is out of control, it's just going to be frustrating. It's going to be uncomfortable because to, to punch and to miss, it doesn't feel right. It's not what I want to be doing. So that's why we want to go in nice and slow with one punch at a time. You start with the straight punches. The one is the jab. That's my lead straight. It's also the simplest punch to throw in boxing. You're just extending your arm all the way out and bringing it back in. So starting nice and slow, I'm gonna start to tap that bag. And what I'm doing here is I'm starting to develop a rhythm, slowly understanding how this bag moves. Every time I do this, every repetition, I start to get a better and better picture of how this bag moves, of how I hit it affects how it moves, the speed, the angle that I hit in. These are all ways in which you develop a rhythm in boxing. So you wanna start with the jab, nice full extension. This is the pace that you should start at. Not super exciting, but guess what? It's only the very beginning the more you drill this down, the quicker you can get into the fun stuff. Then, once you feel like you've established a pretty good rhythm with the jab, you can then move to the two, which is the rear straight, coming from the back arm, similar to the jab, but I'm pivoting my hips to drive a little bit more power. And same idea, nice and slow. I can see that this is a little trickier than my jab because I have a little more power behind the two, but it's the same idea. Every time I'm hitting this, I'm getting closer and closer to developing a rhythm and figuring out how this moves. So once you feel like you're starting to develop a rhythm with the one and the two, we can put the two punches together and just work a one-two. But again, we want to be nice and slow here. One, two. If your bag is going all around like this, you might have jumped ahead too fast and you want to go back to just working a one. But if you can keep the bag on a straight line, working the one, two, then you're on the right track. Then, with more and more practice, you can start to throw that one, two a little faster.
Now we're really starting to develop a rhythm. From there, you can go into the rounded punches, which are a lot harder, but going at that slow, relaxed pace, we can take our time. So I would then go to the three. That's gonna be the lead hook. Super slow on the hooks, because these are harder. Again, if I'm trying to wail away here, it's gonna be difficult. But by starting slow, I start to see how to develop a rhythm with my hooks. Then you can go over and start to work the four. Then you move to a three, four. Take as much time as you need. Then once we start to see that rhythm coming together, the next thing is to put together our first combination. And the best way to do it is the four punches that we've covered. A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, nice and slow, because developing a rhythm with combinations is different than just the one punch rhythm. The third and final step here is part mental and it's part physical. It is to fail fast. And what do I mean by that? I mean that going into training, you need to be comfortable knowing that a lot of times you're gonna miss, a lot of times you're gonna have unsuccessful connections with the bag and just internalizing that that's just part of it. It's also why it was developed so that boxers can stay balanced when they miss their target because when they're in the ring, they're with another opponent and they're gonna miss a lot so they have to stay balanced. So part of this is that you should be missing. So failing fast is the correct approach knowing that you're gonna miss more often than you hit at first and you're okay with that. I see people come into the gym all the time and they get really frustrated when they miss because it doesn't feel natural. You didn't buy a piece of boxing equipment to miss. So that's why it feels a little weird, but we need to work through that. That's growth, that's development, that's how we train. Some people who they hit the bag and then they go, oh. if they miss, they throw their hands up. Nope, you wanna start to be comfortable missing. And the reason that's half mental and half physical is because it's a mindset, but it also has some physical requirements too. In order to be comfortable missing, I need to be balanced. I need to have the weight evenly distributed between my lead leg and my rear leg. So if any time I miss, I'm not going anywhere. So that's part of the practice. As you're developing your rhythm, understanding that if I miss, I'm gonna stay nice and balanced. So fail fast and stay balanced is the third and final step. All right, and that's gonna do it for this brief tutorial on how to hit a reflex bag for the very first time. I'd encourage you to take your time with these steps. Jumping ahead, even though we're super eager, it's gonna make our development ultimately longer in the long run. But taking our time to really understand how this bag works and spending time practicing is then gonna open up a lot of possibilities. So I wish you all the best. Please like this video if you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for free weekly boxing workouts once you have that rhythm going.